myself Dr. Umesh Kumar. I am going to present on recombinant DNA technology and its applications. So uh, we need to identify the problem why we need recombinant DNA technology. Actually previously a lot of issues, lot of uh, diseases create uh, problems, lot of uh, issues were related to productions of uh, insulin, productions of monoclonal antibodies. So it was, uh, the source was very limited. So what we planned actually in early 1980s, uh, we have that process of recombinant DNA technology where we were combining uh, DNAs from different sources, means uh, those DNA, genomic DNAs from those different types of cells to create those artificial genetic sequences that, that is called target uh, gene, uh, DNA sequences which can be used to actually produce particular protein in uh, uh, like hormones, insulin and other resources. So the key concept is uh, genetic engineering which is actually allowing the, that particular manipulation of that particular gene into the research medicine and in the field of biotechnology. As I told you that historical, uh, historically uh, Stanley Cohen and Herbert Boyer had developed uh, those first recombinant DNA molecule in 1970s and that uh, concept given a lot of uh, discoveries uh, and inventions in the field of you know medicine like insulin productions and in uh, agriculture like genetic genetically modified uh, plants. So uh, we need to understand this recombinant DNA technology where we are actually targeting that uh, gene of interest, DNA of interest. So we have to isolate that DNA of interest which uh, can be actually ligated onto a vehicle that is called vector. Vector will be the, the, the traveling partner for that gene of interest in, which will be actually introduced into a uh, foreign cell or you can say a you know host cells so this foreign DNA will be introduced into the host cells particularly example is E. coli cells and then it will be uh, divided that uh, those, uh, those cells will be divided further and then multiple copies can be achieved of that uh, target DNA or DNA of interest. So this is a technique of uh, that uh, DNA of interest uh, you know to produce lot of uh, copies or cloning of that particular DNA which can later be expressed into those expression vectors to produce proteins also. So uh, the key concepts in this RDT is uh, there are several steps. First we need to isolate that uh, uh, genomic DNA which is actually target DNA from that particular organism. Uh, suppose we are taking that uh, human insulin gene then that particular gene will be actually uh, put it onto that uh, vector uh, we have to cut the, the dna with the help of restriction enzymes that particular target dna from that dna with the help of those molecular seizures uh, there are several molecular seizures or you can say endonucleases exonucleases uh, then we have to insert that uh, gene of interest onto the vectors and commonly used vectors are plasmids, uh, uh, viruses and artificial chromosomes and then we have to transform these particular uh, recombinant DNA into a host cells to produce a lot of uh, recombinant DNA molecules and after that we have to screen those uh, recombinant DNA uh, whether they are being developed into the, those various uh, divided cells and after these identifying these successful recombinants we have to actually uh, get those products uh, we have to isolate those products whether it is uh, cloned DNA or whether it is expressed protein so uh, we can use uh, you know uh, several uh, you know tools for, to take this uh, recombinant DNA technology we have to use uh, restriction enzymes which can specifically cut that DNA sequences uh, from that uh, genomic DNA or either the, those uh, same uh, restriction enzymes can cut 
that plasmid DNA which will produce some specific sites where that particular specific targeted DNA can be ligated with the help of DNA ligases. This, this is very important enzyme DNA ligase which will actually join those uh, DNA fragments. And then we need uh, a specific vector, uh, particularly a uh, plasmid vector, uh, which you can see on the right hand side uh, that plasmid PBR322 uh to achieve that uh, you know process of recombinant dna and then this recombinant dna specifically designed recombinant dna will be the, you know introduced into the host organism particularly in e coli uh, so so that it can be uh, divided further uh, in, the, in the cell division so once we we'll get those uh, cloned dna or ex, uh, you know uh, proteins so those proteins could be helpful in uh, medicines also like we used to produce insulin uh, which was first commercially uh, you know produced by Genentech as uh, in 1982 then we have developed vaccines vaccines HPV vaccines HPV vaccines and uh, we have uh, now treating uh, genetic disorders like as SCADA and cystic fibrosis and we are particularly now developing monoclonal antibodies for the cancer treatment, particularly in breast cancer, we are using Herceptin, right? So, uh, uh, there are several applications in agriculture also. Now, it is, you can see, we are actually uh, uh, using those uh, Bt cotton, which is actually having a particular gene, which is assisting uh, uh, to the base. We, we are using golden rice, which is enriched with the lot of vitamin C, vitamin A and then there are several other uh, disease resistant plants like papaya which is resistant to the ring spot viruses and other livestock improvement like transgenic animals for better yield. So it is also important in the agriculture uh, and then we have a very important uh, application in the industry and environmental uses. Uh, Bioremediation is very important in the globally uh, you know uh, where a lot of problems are there due to these uh, used plastics so now these rdt engineered bacteria is cleaning those uh, stuffs like to clean oil spills in the sea and there are a lot of uh, applications in the biofuel productions where you can see those bacteria uh, are helpful in you know producing those biofuel by the chemical processing and uh, enzyme productions also which is very important uh, amylase lipase for detergents these are being produced by the using rdt and pharmaceuticals in uh, we are producing a lot of hormones human growth hormones clotting factors and several other hormones uh, which is being routinely uh, produced so these are those important applications which uh, is actually being used in rdt and now we will be discussing about those future prospects rather we are actually targeting those precision medicine these days for the treatment of a specific disease which is having the basis of several genes as you know there are several biomarkers which is uh, being identified for those particular uh, diseases we are identifying genes by using ngs uh, the, the, the dna sequences and of post covid we are using ngs a lot to identify the actual gene problems so that that gene can be edited uh, at specific locations uh, and then we are using that CRISPR -Cas9, Cas9 procedures for gene editing and then are uh, producing uh, you know artificial cells and nowadays we are lab grown uh, organs are also being produced by 3D by printings like uh, kidneys and heart also so it is showing a very promising approach rdt is the future uh, you know where we can use this technique for the identification of diseases also and for the treatment aspects also so we can produce a lot of uh, hormones uh, in the laboratories earlier it was uh, used uh, you know to isolate those hormones from animals so we need to sacrifice those animals previously but but nowadays rdt has made uh, 
uh, easy this process so this can be uh, produced by you know uh, stock in the laboratories uh, it is helping a lot so this is uh, the important technology in producing you know the, the number of copies of that particular genes or proteins in the uh, laboratory thank you so much